Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy Elliott. Welcome to the One Percenter Podcast. I'm here today with my man, Eric Gravel. I want you to understand this. This guy is a killer, dude. Um, just sold your business, right? Correct. Crushed it, killed it. Uh, multi, multi-millionaire. Dude, super smart. Um, got a really kick-butt story to kind of tell you guys today. I tell you guys every single time that we get together that all I want to do is bring you value. You know, why not you, right? Like, why not any and every single one of you, right? It doesn't matter where you've been. doesn't matter what you've gone through. All the adversity doesn't matter. It's all there to get you ready for what you're going to go through next, right? And um, we're in an era right now that I think is super cool. Like, it's special because I can talk to Eric, which none of you would know him if it wasn't for social media. And I can introduce you to him and I can have Eric tell you his story about how he got to where he's at. It wasn't always easy. You know, what did he do when he wanted to quit? How did he push through? What were some of the good decisions he made? And dude, just studying people is how you grow. I study the world. The world's your library. If you know what you're looking for, it'll give you what you're looking for. So our goal today is to help you absolutely become badasses. And we just want to tell you guys, we love you. We appreciate you. So um, Eric, number one, you're looking at a shirt that says Mind yeah, 7X. Right. It means mindset. Eric, it speaks French, okay? But I told him I don't understand French, so he's got to speak English. So he he's, he can roll in English. But um, if he's if it's broken a little bit or he's trying to explain, I want you to understand that I'm asking him to speak, not in his first language. Right. So anyways, I appreciate you, brother. Thanks hey, he's an team. animal, guys. He's going to bring a lot of value to us today. So if you're ready to kill it and you're a one percenter and you want to grow, here we go. So number one, you're 46 years old. You're here right. with your son. He's 18 over here. Yep. You guys flew in from Canada. That's correct. Right? Um, let's rock and roll. Let's start, we'll start wherever you want. Let's rip. A lot of people ready so, to change. So when I talk to people and, and and tell them it's possible to get there or whatever level they want to reach, whatever it's a seven digit or eight digit, I always go back to where I started. Mm. You know, when I was broke, when I was at zero, totally like bottom of the barrel, and I started uh, working for Montreal City, uh, City of Montreal, as a fireman. That's where it really all started. I was 26 at that time, mm -hmm. and my story kind of started to pick up from there where you know i've learned from those guys so hard workers blue collar uh they had two jobs three jobs sometimes so that's where i kind of started understanding the value of working more uh trying to just make it to the next level and finding ways of being successful whatever it was building houses or being a contractor or working for someone else you know I, i've done it all and that's really where I kind of learned for a couple of years to, you know, find my way of, you know, trying to get out of the just being working for someone and, and being on my own at some point. You know? Get out of the rat race. Yeah. Just everybody's right. stuck in this, yep. in this funnel. Yep. Right. And a lot of people don't find their way out of it. So would you say that hard work, grit, constantly learning, right? Just be, it, letting it, other people I, I repeat you? that all the time where, you know, those in French, we, we would say pretty much the same thing, but it's like uh, being constant, being hard worker, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just hustling every day, repeating the same process mm -hmm. over and over. Because at first, you, it seems like it's a long road, mm -hmm. but as you're repeating them, it starts picking up at some point. You know, the compound. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's called grit. I always yep. tell people, like, just the grit yep. of doing the mundane, yep. right? Like, it's the same thing again. Same thing as it was yesterday. But most people, they start something, and it's new, and they're like, yep. dude, I'm going to kill this, or I'm going to grow this. But then once they do it for a while, they slowly start to slow down. Yeah, because they, it's too hard, or it's too long, or it's... Or they get comfortable. Yeah. Hey, you get in a new relationship. You meet some chick. She's yep. hot. You're like, damn, man, I want to win her over. Exactly. Two years later, you're stopping pressing her. Yeah. Like, people, I think, stop uh, reproving themselves. How how did you keep proving yourself along the way? Firemen, doing this, being a contractor, building a house, dude, like, doing all these things, right? Yeah. You don't just make it out the gate. It's always, to me, putting new goals. So mm -hmm. I'm never satisfied. Mm -hmm. Some people might see it as a, a disadvantage or something that's kind of you know, harder for me because you're always putting the level or rising the bar But, but, every but year, you seem so. grateful, grateful and yep. never satisfied. It's not that you're greedy. You're yep. not like, I want more. You're like, I'm capable of exactly. more, so I, I want to max get out. Yeah. All the time. All right, guys, sorry to interrupt the video. I told my man Eric, let's hold up for just a second, okay? If you guys want to coach with Eric, you guys can click the link below right now. I want you to understand something. Eric, is, he's a badass. He wouldn't be on my podcast if he's not an animal. 
This guy, not only did he do it on his own, but he's passionate and crazy about teaching other people how to do it. So you guys right now, you see that link below, just go down and click on it, okay? You guys can set up, get coaching started with Eric immediately. This guy went to a $28 million business. What are you capable of? He didn't have him as a coach. You can have him as a coach. So guys, click the link below, start right now. Let's get back to the video. So oh, even geez. after 15 years of doing it, almost 16 years now, I'm still searching for that next level where, mm. you know, it could be technology or like we, we all hear about like uh, uh, what's happening right now on, on not only social media, but like uh, uh, chat GPT yeah, and AI, AI and stuff like that. So I could be just sitting there and, and just saying, oh, it's not for me. I'm done, you know. I want to learn those things. I want to get, mm -hmm. with, you know, with my son, my nephew, my employees and see, hey, let's learn this. Let's see what we can do with that. Let's see how we can use it and help other people get better. Yeah, I want to tell everybody something. So there's a, a mentor of mine I watch a lot. His name's Patrick Bet David, yep. right? And I like watching a lot of his, his content. Very smart man. And he talks about, you know, in the old days, or we'll say five years ago, yep. okay? Because five years ago seems like the old oh, days. Um, so much changes with technology now. Um, he said people used to have to learn five new skills, yep. right, every five years. But now because there's so much new technology, so much, you know, that you can learn and grasp. And we're in this uh, generation where you can learn so quickly from so many people um, in this coaching era. It's a trillion dollar business in this coaching industry. Um, you know something, you're really good at it. If I want to become good at it, I'll just pay you to teach me quick. I don't have to work for this company for 20 years to figure it out. Like, but dude, I want to get better. Smart. So that's why I'm always think like I, if I take the coding industry, for example, mm -hmm. I know how to install it. I know to, how to manufacture it. Mm -hmm. I know all the sides or, or, or in and out of what's going to happen. And I'm trying to find a way where how can I change the game of that business? Because everyone is always mm -hmm. following each other. You know, you. I was a manufacturer. I pull out a new product or let, let, let's talk about that. Let's talk about yep. what you do. What, wait, what did you do before you sold your business? So Let, let's talk about that. How yep. did you get into it? And then how did you build it? And then you sold it. Yep. Okay. And then we'll talk about a little bit about what you're doing now. So I started uh, a company named Zone Garage. Mm -hmm. So start, it was back in 2008, 2009. Mm -hmm. And I was a fireman at that time. So, and I wasn't satisfied with what I, what I was buying. So you started an entrepreneurship. Yeah. Uh -huh. Contractor business. And quickly I realized that no one was doing it. So, and that was all over North what, America. What, what is it called? Uh, zone Garage. So zone it's a, a what coat, did it do? floor coating industry for garage floors. Mm -hmm. So with epoxy and all that, you know, a different so type of So you epoxy garage floors, make them look nice. Yeah. Okay. At that time it was, uh, I, I, I've learned it through a company named Citadel. They were in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. And they had this new technology, Polyaspartic was new at that time. And I kind of took it on me, bring it back to Canada and started franchising. Mm. old business because no one was doing it and quickly from 2008 to 2015 we grew it grew it up to about 80 franchise in wow. north america that's huge so i had something at that point so most of the people when they franchise they're like all right i'm just going to keep on franchising but i said like mm, i cannot do that forever because at some point at some point i'm going to be blocked i'm going to start manufacturing my own product so this way i'm going to be in control mm. of the product and the franchise at the same time so that's where I created so you started Pure making Epoxy. Your own stuff? I started making my own stuff from 2015 to 2022. And that's where I sold the company to uh, an American company. And they merged us with another manufacturer. So. Mm. That's good. Good job, dude. Yeah. So I kind of built during all those years, like franchise, uh, dealership, distributors. And what, what did you build it up to? What were you guys doing in revenue? Uh, we were at 28 millions when I sold. So 28 million is Canadian, actually. Uh -huh. So it wasn't like <laughs> it's yeah. different than U.S. dollars, but still, you know, that's uh, that was one of the biggest transaction in that industry at that time. So, yeah. yeah. Well, I want everybody to know something. Okay, so he's a fireman. He's like, I want to self develop. I want to learn more. You started. You had when you started that first day, and you're like, Hey, I'm going to coat some garage door for or garage floors. Yep nobody's thinking this can roll to a $28 million in Never. revenue deal. Like you got to understand this guys. Like I think a lot of people really underestimate two things. Number one, what's possible. Yep. They underestimate what's possible. Number two, they underestimate the amount of effort that it takes to put into something to even get it to that level. Yep. So if, if you can be just like, dude, like I'm, 
not gonna like I understand it takes hard work. I understand that I'm gonna want to quit some days. I need I need to understand that these feelings are gonna happen. These are emotional feelings, but I am never gonna quit. And yep. then understand what's possible, dude. In Canada, the United States, this world, it's it's an exciting time to be alive. It really it is. is. It's an exciting time to be alive. It's a great time to be alive. You guys need to say that to yourself. It's an exciting time to be alive. Um, because it is like there's opportunities. And the cool thing, what I like when you were doing that, you didn't really get to get on social media and learn from people. No, it was all trial and error. I mean, there were no courses, how to go build your business. The only courses I took was how to install the flooring. Mm. And even then after they were calling me to, Hey, what you did on this, we have another customer is having issues. What have you done? What have you done? Mm. I was kind of doing mistakes and learning. And yeah. social media back then in 2008 was just starting. I mean, Facebook was starting. Yeah, it's just we starting. were kind of learning Google AdWords and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. And as it was growing, I was always trying to be upfront everyone. Mm. So even being an installer and becoming a ma- manufacturer, I'm the only one that did that. No one mm. has ever done that. And so being always upfront with technology and and the process of getting there was always what kept me kind of alive in the business because it's not a fun business where you interact with people well and, and then it's just having fun it's managing a lot of problems a lot of fails a lot of you know so when when they call you say hey, it didn't dry did this fish mm-hmm. eyes and stuff like that it's not always fun you know so you gotta what, work your way out what that. what what gave you the idea to start doing these garage floors it was simply, I, I was building my, I think, fifth house or something mm-hmm. like that. And, you well, know, but were you doing that? Were you kind of building houses? And I was just them? like being a fireman to cities. Uh, so full-time Montreal, part-time with another city. Mm-hmm. And I was just building houses every year or two years. And then, so you had a garage floor. So, you know, I was always looking for that new technology, you know, just things in the house that were cool, you know, mm-hmm. so. And the floor, I wasn't happy with what, like, the do-it-yourself kit were doing. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'm just going to learn something new. Mm -hmm. And I did it. It worked out. And then I started comparing, okay, this costs that amount of money to buy the product, not even negotiating nothing. And people sell it for that price. So there's, like, three Gs in between. Mm. I can make money with that. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started doing one, two, three. And then first year we did, I think, was 80 floors. was, like... Not a big thing, yeah. but as a fireman, a fireman, it was like it was huge. Hell yeah! And then the following year, I did 150. Following years, 300 floor, and my fourth year, I was doing 800 garage floor Dang. with four team. And still up to this point, I don't even think that one guy, a contracting business, is doing that or, or has ever done that. Yeah. And that's why you know today when I look at them, I'm like. I can help you guys, you know, to get to that next level. Yeah. I saw it this week. All the guys are struggling to get to the seven digit. Yeah. And they're like, it's never going to happen. They're all negative. It's yeah. like, oh, impossible. Well, yeah, it's possible. So let's talk. So you sold you sold your company. Yeah. After you sold it, what are we doing now? I mean, I know what you're doing, but tell us what happens next. So so right now I still own a, a, an epoxy company, mm-hmm. which is for tables. So mm-hmm. just a table like that, uh-huh. someone would, like woodworkers. And do you do a lot of this stuff? I mean, do I, I, I don't make this stuff, so I make the epoxy, so that woodworker, and, and we like have... Like a manufacturer almost. Yeah, epoxy. same thing. Yeah, I just kind of continued with that brand. Uh-huh. Uh, and I have, f- I'm in 1,400 uh, retailers right now. Yeah, so what stores are you in? What is it? Uh, Maynards. Uh-huh. Maynards, Maynards, I never know how to uh-huh. <laughs> pronounce it. Home Depot, Canada. Uh, Benjamin Moore, Canada. So, so you got your product in over yep. 1,400 stores. That's correct. That's yep. awesome. Yep. And then, and then what else do you do? I know you're – now, by the way, guys, he, he is coaching. Yep. Super important that you guys know that. Yep. Um, you know, I always say this, man. If you want to be the best, go find somebody in any industry. Yep. Like, doesn't matter what you do. Go find the go find the person that broke every record in your industry. Go find somebody. And, and by the way, who is someone who you also want to be around. Like, I think that's important, man. I mean yep. – you know, and, and, what, and one of the, he flew down here from Canada. One of the reasons why I love this guy, number one, his son's over here. I had a long uh, talk with him on a Zoom call. Um, he's done the work. He's put the grind in. You went through the adversity. Yep. You didn't quit. You, 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 you made good money. You literally defeated what a guy like you should, should yep. ha- make happen, which is what I love to share with all of you guys, is that, like, dude, you have no idea what you're capable of when you take your life serious and you don't quit. Um but now you love teaching people. Yeah. 
Like you love you love teaching them. Tell me, what kind of coaching do you do now? Like, so I started off like last year, really mm-hmm. starting just talking about it. I wasn't coaching. I was just giving free advice mm-hmm. on social media, TikTok, Facebook, and all that. And I kind of started loving it, but I started to love the answer of people, what they were saying. Mm-hmm. And it was like, hey, you know, I just woke up this morning, watch your video. I'm fully motivated now. I want to get to that next. Mm-hmm. And to me, I was still like... like fulfillment. Yeah, I was like, I, I'd done nothing. I just filmed the video, just gave my opinion yeah. and people react to that because they're watching it. I'm like, yeah. all right, so let's do more. Let's do more. Let's give more advice. Let's be more on the edge of like, like we said, like the, the, the right side, not the left side, like people who want to be successful, people mm-hmm. who really want to change their life. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And every day I get people aiding on me, but I got so much that are, hey, keep on doing what you're doing. You're changing my life. I'm like, all right, so it's really got an impact on what I'm just saying. It's free. It's it's just over social media Mm -hmm. and telling my story. And then I started saying like, all right, let's build a training program, Mm -hmm. coaching program. But in my province, we're really going to start it from scratch, mm-hmm. from zero. Let's yeah. whatever you're in business, you're you're at six, seven million or something like that. Not six, seven million, six, seven hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. And even some guys that are coming to my course are like, "Hey, I'm doing three millions, but I'm jammed. I I don't know what to do anymore." Yeah, they're capped. Yeah, they're capped. Yeah, they, they don't know how to grow. They, and first thing I see and I saw most of the time is the branding. So mm-hmm. construction company are going to have their name on it. So let's say it's going to be in English, would be like plumbing, uh, X name. Mm-hmm. It's hard to brand that because it's, it's got your name on it. Mm-hmm. it. It it could be done depending on, again, it's different mentalities or yeah. different ways of doing things. But I've always put a brand on my products that would be international, mm. would be good in French because yeah, you have Europe. Because even here in the U.S., people think like, oh, we have U.S., it's English. But if you go in Europe, there are 460 million. Most of them speaks French, Spanish, mm. English. So you got to be able to adapt to all that. And yeah. that's where I saw potential of, you know, just doing training and helping people no matter where they, where they are, it's going to work. Yeah. yeah, basically taking all the stuff that you did yep. on how you build your, build your life, you built your business. Yep. Um, you seem like a pretty chill guy. Are you normally pretty chill? I'm the guy next door. I, I could yeah. literally be your neighbor and you wouldn't know anything, you know? <laughs> so I, 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 I don't like a lot. Like, you know, I have my car, you know, stuff like that, mm-hmm. big pickup truck. And, but other than that, I'm, I'm a family guy. Yeah. Uh, you, you got toys, but you're real, uh, not materialistic. No, no, not really. I, I, I like being around my friends, my family and, and just hang around and have fun couple of beer in there and that's it i'm, I'm not about like uh, nothing superficial or, mm. or yeah yeah see so one of the things that he's saying is number one his his entertainment budget is lower than his or is than his education budget you're 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 always educating yourself you're always trying to yep. figure out who knows what you don't know yep. you're always studying everybody and dude his entertainment budget right that he doesn't care about it like he may have a, a ferrari a lamborghini a nice house you know at the end of the day, most people, any money they make, they go spend every dollar they have. Yep. You know, one of the first lessons of money I was taught is like, it doesn't matter how much you make, it matters how much you keep. Yep. Right? So like, I don't care if you make a little, still save. If you make a lot, save. Like, just save, save, save. Don't be afraid to invest. No, exactly. Right? Like, invest when there's good. I like low risk, high upside. Yeah. Okay? Houses. Like, Art. Yeah, I was about to say, like, real estate's great. Yep. Uh, personal development is great. I mean, honestly... Look, I know this sounds crazy, but if a guy was like, I have 50 grand, okay, um, what should I invest it in? To me, I would ask, how much self-development have you done in yourself? And if they said, well, I haven't done a lot, I would say, take the 50, put it into you. Because if you take the 50 and you put it into a house and you hadn't put it into you, you don't know how to sell, you don't know how to speak, you don't know how to talk, you don't know how to market, you don't know, like, dude, like, you're going to lose the 50. 
Like you're going to end it. Like I think building yourself not only allows you today to make money, but it makes you, you know, money forever, right? Oh, that's correct. Yeah, because like self development's huge, and I love your shirt. So it says Mind Seven X, yep. which means mindset. Whatever you're truly thinking about in your head is what's going to happen. If like you believe in it, if you put all the the, the effort around what you, so that's why on my screen I always have a target of something I want eventually. Yeah, it could be a. Like I used to have the Lambo on my screen. Mm -hmm. I had it for 15 years mm. and every day I was watching it, but that was my kind of child dream, you mm -hmm. know, of having it. Yeah. Once you have it, then it's what's next. Yeah. You know, what, yeah it's, it, what's it, next. it's just, yeah. you need goals in life for sure. So if you don't set up goals and, and, and if you don't put target of hey this year, like, like I did a post on uh, December 31st, I said this year, what do you guys want to do? You know, like what's your target what's your this year? And I said, like, mines are this, 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 and that. And people might look at this and say, well, that's unachievable like, mm -hmm. in a year. See, January, like, after the first month, I had, like, half of it done. So I have 11 months. It's called attack. It. Yeah. Yeah. I rushed into the first month to mm -hmm. get everything ready. Dude, I tell people all the time, I'm like, dude, do me a favor. Sit down. I give them a piece of paper and a pen. I just, like, write down 10 things that yep. you want to accomplish in the next 12 months. Yep. 10, 10, 10 dreams, 10 goals, 10 goals in the next 12 months. So they'll write down 10 and then I'll say, all right, just now look at the paper and which one, if you couldn't have 10 and you could only have one, which one would you want right now? Yep. If they would give it to you now out of those 10, you could have that one right now. Which one would you be? Circle that one that stands out. Look at it. And you can look down and you'll see it. It'll stand out. And you're like, it would be that. If I could only choose one, It'd be this one. That one needs to be the thing that you work for your hardest. You keep yep. on your mind nonstop until you get it. The problem, I, I think, from what I see, a lot of people are, they put goals, but then they have excuse. Mm. Oh, I had this this weekend, or oh, this happened. Mm -hmm. or, so, and they, they don't put the amount of work that needs to be done. So imagine when I was doing 28 millions, I was doing my accounting, I was managing 27 social media page. Mm. So all the pure epoxy page all over the world, I was managing them. Mm. Uh, sales, all the top customers, I was doing them. Mm -hmm. But every night I was working until 10, 11. That's crazy. And only, what, 12 employees at the end? Yeah. So imagine. you're grinding. Yeah. yeah. But my goal is always to do, and, and I know people might say like, well, you know, you're not encouraging, like uh, you're, you're not supporting employment or, or things like that. I'm trying to do more with less because this well, way. Well, the goal in business is to make money. Yeah. Not being negative, but like, it's like people. But like I said, in Canada, it's different. So we're, we, we have. Yeah. Well, I tell people all the time, mindsets. I'm like, there's one rule to business. Don't lose money. Yeah. There's one rule to business. Don't lose money. And also, the, so bottom line profits, bottom line profits also. Ex expenses are great when needed, but yeah. a lot of people do, they either work really hard and we could have 12 people or nobody really works and we can have 24 people. Exactly. It's like, dude, I, it, I'd rather it, be around I, hard I think at some point you need to find the right balance where mm -hmm. you got to show the example to your employees. So Facts. if you're the first one leaving, they're not going to be motivated to, to do more. So if you're leaving at noon and at 3 p.m., they're going to be like, oh, he's never here or yeah. this and that. So I was doing more work, was first showing off in the morning and last one leaving and still working at night. And they were seeing the Facebook post. They knew I was the one making them. Yeah, they see you building the brand nonstop. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's called standards, Yep. right? And everyone sees them too. Like your distributor, when you post everything and you, po you, you make like 15 posts a day, mm -hmm. then everyone wants to join your team. Mm. And I had this conversation because I know we're going to talk about this where, you know, the objection of coming into the U.S. as a Canadian mm -hmm. is one thing. But mm -hmm. coming in the U.S. as a French Canadian, that's another level. So mm. today when I, I tell people that you got to answer all the haters, you got to fight your way through it, you got to fight all the objection. Mm -hmm. I made it and, and I had everyone against me. And, mm -hmm. and I remember one during Christmas on Facebook, I think it went like 450 message on a forum because someone was bashing me, mm. my brand. And I stood up for my brand, my mm -hmm. product, defended all the way until midnight, 
next morning I had 10 new customers mm. they say I want to be with you because you're it's your passion yeah you're passionate you're standing behind your brand mm -hmm. and I know if I have an issue you're going to be there yeah dude that's something we don't see in this world anymore dude we literally uh, we always say a, a courageous man dies once and a coward dies thousands of times yep. you know like just whatever you believe lean into it dude um, I always say this don't sell out yep. like how you made it to be successful is you didn't sell out no Like, like you, you, like you never sold your will to win. Never. Right. And I, I I'm not a, a salesman by myself. I've never tried to sell something to anyone. I'm like, this is what I offer. Mm -hmm. You like it. You take it. You don't watch me. You're going to see it all over the place. Mm. So if I was floor. Yeah. So as people were, oh, you, I, 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 I saw things like, oh, your product is dog shit. It's this, it's that. And as they were saying this, I was posting 20,000 square feet project we mm. were doing. And the more they were talking shit, the more project I was posting because I was keeping them in bank. I wasn't posting everything. So I was just waiting the right moment to yeah. just... Because forums in the coding industry used to be like wild. It was really? Like, yeah. It's like you, you would never see that with a, a garage door guy or windows or plumbing or... I mean, you go on an electrician forum, it's like, hey, dude, how you doing? Hey, I've done this. Oh, nice work. Us, it was like, this dog shit. This is this. This. It's Just always everybody's negative. Everybody's bashing each other. Everything is, everyone is bashing each other. So That's crazy. It's a, 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 they were creating forums to talk against me mm. and posting pictures of a Canadian saying sorry, for example, and drinking maple syrup. But I was laughing at that because... I was born in it. I mean, Ontario don't like French Canadian, and mm. it's they're right next to us, and it's like Why? it's part of it, it's part of the culture because we're we're always the the province where we're whining about everything and whining about like oh the French needs to be protected and this and that. So everything every time there's something going wrong in mm -hmm. Canada, they're blaming the province of Quebec mm. for whatever reason. Sometimes they're right, sometimes they're wrong, but that's. We're the, how do you say that? Like the child that no one likes? Yeah. Yeah, so that's, <laughs> that's what we are. So. Is that where you live? Yeah, it's exactly where I live. So so, so how did you get the shirts Mind 7X? Like, so, so the, like I know it's French, right? Yeah, so the idea always come up with I'm trying to bring the French expression into whatever I'm doing. So when I, it was pure epoxy, mm -hmm. so you could read pure P-U-R-E, which would be English, pure P-U-R would be French, mm -hmm. but the E was used as both French, like the epoxy, mm. the first letter was used. So whatever you liked it in French, or I could argue with someone saying, oh, it's French, it's English. Yeah. Because again, when we're going to Europe, well, half of it are speaking French, I think, so. So you gotta, I, I've always branded something being international where mm -hmm. I could go anywhere. And that's... What, was your product sold internationally? Yeah, it was. Okay. Yeah, Europe uh, was, uh, it was in Europe, Mexico, South America. Yeah, so freaking States, everywhere. Canada. So, so I'm always trying to keep that in mind because what differentiate me from others is I can go anywhere. Mm. While sometimes a brand in U.S. cannot mm. come to Canada because mm. they're not French. So they have a hard time crossing the border the other way. Same thing in Europe. So they got to adapt when finding someone that speaks French. Yeah. So we're still like 8.5 million, so which in in a 36 million country. So it's kind of a, a kind of a huge mass. And that's only the province. There's other French speaking people in Canada as well. So um, what are a couple of things that you would say that were some struggles in life? Maybe some really like some tough things that, you know, maybe you wanted to quit at some point. Uh, family wise, it was tough at some point working like two or three jobs, building houses, not seeing the kids and all that, mm -hmm. you know, as they were growing, I was trying to be there all the time, but you know, firemen, we were working, uh, like two days on, it, it was like uh, four days, then seven days off, three nights, uh, five days off. And then two days, 24 hours, three mm -hmm. nights. And now they've changed the shift, the shift to a 24 hours, which is always in and out. Mm -hmm. But it was, uh, I was working every two weekends. So mm -hmm. I was missing a lot. And when I was working at night during the day, I was doing floor coatings. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of hard to, you know, build the business and get to where we're at right now. So that's why when I got all the offers in 2022, I kind of cried over it because I was like, hey, now you saw all the the hard, hard work, work the commitment and yeah, why i did off. this now we can build from that now we're to another into another level 
and my old family is working with me now. So my That's daughter's going to start cool. her, her own business. My son's going to work with me in, in the business we're creating right That's now. That's super cool. And my wife is just taking care of ice epoxy and all the orders and all that. How, how so, long have you and your wife been together? Uh, 20 years now. Yeah. Married for, uh, she, I, 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 <laughs> I remember. But my, you all have been together 20 years. Yeah, 20 years we've been together, yeah. So That's I think it's been 10 years uh, this year we've been married. So we, so we did everything reverse. So we did the kids and then we got married. So Yeah. Yeah. I like so, it. Yeah, You're it's, together. It's just it different. Matter. Exactly. So yeah, there's no no rules. And as we're growing and as we're we're, we're building this, our relation is getting better and better because mm. we work together. That's what we like about it. And uh, you know, every day we're, you know, at at, at the job or at home, mm. we're all together, and that's what make us even stronger. So. Yeah. Yeah. And so you got together with her when you were like 26 or something. I was 26. She was 22. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and she was kids. in a city like two hours away from where I, I was living. So we kind of met her on, on the internet back yeah. then. How many kids you guys got? Uh, three kids. So 18, 17, and 9. So even the 9 years old, she talked to me this week. It was funny because she says like, hey, Dad, I want to talk to you about a project. And I'm like, yeah, go ahead. She so was... I want to build this bracelet thing on and buy, you know, diamonds and like, or plastic things, you know, mm-hmm. and pearls and stuff. So, and I want to start building, having my own little website. I was she laughing. She sell. <laughs> she was selling She's me the product. She's money. Yeah. It, 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 and honestly, never we, never we talked about business at home. Like mm-hmm. we tried to talk about something else. She you know? watches you. Yeah. Yeah, she knows. So, it's, in, yeah. it's in her DNA. It's in her yeah, blood. It, it, it's, that, that's what's hard with kids that you got to be careful is mm-hmm. your, your, projecting something so i'm always going to be like talking about like fighting my way through mm-hmm. something but they listen they you know they they become like this they they put pressure on themselves mm-hmm. you know that's what's hard today with kids is they put a lot of pressure because they want to be successful too and they they want to mm-hmm. they want to impress you they want to well you're so. doing a good job though as their yep. as their as their father you know what i mean i mean showing them the way like yep. what's possible yeah you know and by the way like you didn't know you were going to end up in coding, nope. right? Like, Never. Like, that's the deal. Like, I think a lot of people have an idea where they think they're going to end up. You yeah. might have thought you were always going to be a firefighter. Yeah. I was happy with that. I mean, yeah. I, I wasn't, even today, I, I still give, like, firefighter a lot of credit. Mm-hmm. They're hard, hard workers, uh, genuine guys, yeah. the guy next door, Great always culture. ready to help because that's what we do. I say we as I, I was still working into that's, this. That's how they run. And, and a lot of people ask me if I would go back, 100% I would go back, work, mm-hmm. just have the Culture. Upper, opportunity to go back on a fire truck on a on a on just a one call. Mm-hmm. It, it gives me chills and goosebumps all the time. So, so what was that like? It was special. It was like, because you, you get the, it, it's all, it's similar to business. So you get, you get used to, you know, get all the orders from your customers, mm-hmm. the same old thing. And then you get that big order or you get that big call. Yeah. It was it always, you up. then it shakes you up, but then you get used to it. And then you get, you're not satisfied until the next big mm-hmm. thing. Next and rush. you know, the first couple of years you're, you're excited for whatever comes in, you know, mm-hmm. a fire alarm, you're like, Oh, well, that's a big thing. And you see all the other guys are like, Hey, chill out, chill out. It's going <laughs> to be fine. You know? And then once you get the first fire, then you want, you want more, you know, not you're, mm-hmm. you're expecting people to have, those things, those kinds of things, but you want to have more. And that's what I've learned through the business. It's exactly the same. You always want to get to that next level. I'm never satisfied, ever. Mm-hmm. Even if tomorrow I would sell back another company, 10, 20, 30 millions, I would want to get to the, What can you, I do? You to do it again. Get, yeah, do it again. Yeah. Faster, better, and always like. Yeah, and technology just yeah. keeps getting better. It's just and by crazy. the way, dude, it's never been easier to win. I mean, there's a it lot is. of people right now that have no idea yep. what's possible right now because you have every resource you need in this world. Yep. And all you got to do is work hard, have a good perspective, keep a good mindset. Um, uh, super important. Are you on social media right now? 100%. Mm-hmm. So How fa- can people find you on social media? On Instagram? Uh, Instagram, Facebook. TikTok is my biggest account. So right now it's only in French though. So I'm creating a new one that's going to be only English. So and, and wh- I kind of practice. And on what the, account are you on right now? What is it? Uh, so it's called Eric Gravel, uh-huh. Mind7X. So, so I have the worldwide, which is the English one. Mm-hmm. And and I have the, the Quebec one, which is the French one. 
I love it, guys. E R I K and then gravel. G R A V E L. That's correct. Is yep. that right? Yep. Um, super important. One last thing. Yep. Obviously, um, I've shared a little bit of stuff where if somebody wanted to coach with you, they could reach out to you. Yep. Um, what would you say was one of the best things you did that really helped? I know you talked about some things that you know were hard, but like, what, what is something that you did that was good that you're like, dude, that was like a epiphany bridge. Like it took me from here to there, like something you can think of, like that day, that happening, that changed everything. I think it, it would be when uh, we crossed the border. So we used to be only in Canada. So we were kind mm-hmm. of bragging about what we were doing. But when we started crossing borders, whatever it's in Europe or United States, uh-huh. that kind of opened everyone's eyes as like we're right. going we're, we're going worldwide yeah we're going worldwide so it's not we're gonna not gonna stop even if you're talking shit against us it's not gonna stop us and at that point i realized that i had something because i was the only one in that industry mm-hmm. really being everywhere so i started seeing people wanted to copy me mm. so haters or or you know because i had to the challenge They're to just go trying to reduplicate which so, so i lo- by the way love the flag love the country I, mm-hmm. I i wish i would i would have been born in the u.s at some mm-hmm. point and but it was always like hey buy from us we're made in usa don't buy from him but i i was buying raw material from the united states and mm-hmm. bringing them back in canada and selling them back you know so we were just mixing our stuff so when they realized that you know I was doing this. That's where it really changed the game. And then it started growing really, really fast. Good job, dude. Yep. That's super cool. So once you crossed, um, I always say you got to stack up your wins. Yep. Um, every day you need to try to find proof, right? Like why you should believe in yourself. Yep. You know what I mean? And when you saw that, like, hey, we're crossing these borders, you're like, dude, now we're going to attack. Yeah. Right? It's huge, honestly, because, like, imagine we're, we're – 36 million like i said we're only eight millions in quebec mm-hmm. just selling in canada is a huge thing because you have the the barrier of language mm-hmm. and then once you cross to a three you're what 260 million or something yeah, 360. and then 460 million in europe and in europe they see us as superstars so it's yeah. it's literally like how we see the united America. states on our end and yeah. they see us as canada Canada as superstar. Isn't that crazy? So that's great. Yeah. <laughs> so when they announced me, let's say for a training in Europe, in Belgium, so hey, Eric, you know, from Canada, like used to yeah, manufacture and this and that, like people, people like, are like, they're, yeah. they're flying from all over Europe just to meet with me and take pictures. That's so it's it's different mentalities, but once you master everything and, and you're kind of playing with that, mm-hmm. it's super fun. For sure. Well, guys, super important. Number one, uh, Eric. He uh, obviously did the work, he grinded, he reinvented himself, he recreated himself, he believed in himself, Uh, you manifested what you were going to become. It happened, didn't happen overnight. Oh, 15 years. Yeah, there you go, 15 years. How old are you guys now? You know, what do you want to be worth? You know, I think life, life is a hoax sometimes. Like, they tell you that you have to, you know, work for a couple of years and then you'll get ahead yeah. and then I, you have to work your whole life. You have to, and by the way, I, I love working. Yeah. Don't you love working? I, I love working. Like, I love creating. Yeah. There you go. He loves creating. He loves working. He loves being an artist. Yep. You know what I mean? Like this, this is a blank canvas in life right now. Yeah. Totally um, right. And, and you're alive in a time right now that's super exciting. Um, it actually is thirsty for artists yep. to create on this piece of canvas Whatever you guys have in your mind, if you believe you can do it, stay crazy. Keep feeding that. Be around people that believe in you. If you don't believe in you, um, don't quit. Study. Get around great people. So you guys have an opportunity. You can reach out to him. You guys can reach out to him on Instagram, or there's always going to be a link below that you guys can click. You guys can uh, can reach out to him. He's amazing, man. I love that he's low-key. I love that, you know, he said he uh, blue-collar. He's like, you know, blue-collar, grinder. You know, but dude, you have no idea what's possible when you start taking your life serious and you're in an era right now where you can learn from people that have done big stuff that you want to do and you don't have to waste years. You can just plug into these people and ask them, hey, teach me everything you know. Um, That's crazy, man. You know, I remember when I wanted to grow, they were like, read a book, read a book. And I would read as many books as I can. But you know what I always love doing? And remember when you were younger, me and you were the same age almost. You're 40, I'm 44, you're 46. 
They said, if you want to kill it, go buy a rich man dinner and, and take him out, you know? Yep. And I remember that was, I know this sounds crazy, but that's how we did it. Like I would literally go and take someone who was wealthy. Let's say the guy's a millionaire. And I would say, let me buy you dinner. And I would take that person. I'd get him a full five course meal. I'd make sure I'd spend as much time with them as I can. And all I wanted to do was to not say a word, but just to let them talk to me. And then I could hopefully somewhere along the way pick yep. up some sort of advice or success leaves clues on how I could take what you were doing and go. And I, you, you, there was no mentorship program. Nope. There was no way I could pay. It was just buy a dinner. And if you said yes, I had an hour to two hours, depending on how long I could stay with you, to feed you, to buy your dinner, and just to tell you thank you. And that two hours or hour, like if I could get that person to say yes, that had to be what I lived on all year long with reading books. Dude, this guy's got coaching programs you can literally get into and you can study and you can study him. You can talk to him. Zoom meeting, he's directly speaking to you. You can do all these things. This is crazy. I do the same thing with people all the time. Eric, he smashed this industry and now he's teaching entrepreneurs, business people on how to grow their businesses, how to scale quick. So and it's, a, you, it's not a huge fix either. Because mm -hmm. people sometimes they, they, they you know, as you were saying, I do the same thing if I go for dinner with someone mm -hmm. and listen to his needs. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's just a small fix. Dude, you're just doing it wrong there. Just change this, put the hard work, and then I'm, boom, you're, you're I'm, gone. I'm so glad you said that. I want to tell some of you guys right now the power in having a good coach. There's a book, Three Feet from Gold. Yep. It's a great book you guys should read. And without even telling you what it is, it's three feet from gold. Yep. The guy literally was three feet. He was chopping up an entire mine. The dude's three feet away. The guy quits. Someone else goes in, chops, chop, chop, chop. Yep. All that work, dude, he was three feet away. And the dude stopped. You know, bed of diamonds. You get so many different things. You know, people are sitting on a bed of diamonds. Oh, it's crazy. And most of them don't know it. You guys are lucky to be alive in this era. You guys, the greatest investment you can make is in yourself. If you've made it to the end of this podcast, you're the true one percenter. You guys, make sure you follow him. You said on Instagram. It's Instagram, Eric. Facebook. Uh -huh, but you said it. Tell us one more time. It's Eric. Oh, Eric Gravel at mind seven X at, at my, that's what I wanted to ask. It was Eric gravel at under mind seven X or, like uh, or yeah. under slash, but check him out guys. He's a kick butt guy. We're going to be close together. We're going to be doing a lot of stuff together. I love being around winners. My wife in 2024, she asked, she goes, Hey, what's your goal this year? I said, dude, I just want to surround myself with winners. That's all I care about, man. That's all I want to do. Yeah. I've, I've learned proximity is power. And like the better people I'm around, the better I become. Yep. And so I just want to be around good people. So I just want to tell you guys, number one, we love you. We appreciate you. Eric's up in, is it Quebec? Quebec, yeah, that's right. Yep. Number so you're, one you're, language. You're, you're close to yeah. <laughs> a couple of French words. That's French, so. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and he's a killer, and he's doing seminars. He's doing all kinds of cool stuff. He's training people. you got a big event coming up, right? Yeah, I have one with 150 students, so we're mm -hmm. starting there. Yeah, yeah. And, so he's got a big event coming up. Guys, yep. you got to reach out to him. If you're interested in doing some stuff with him, DM him on on uh, on instagram yep. um you guys can click the link below you can get in touch with them but most importantly dude just thanks for sharing your thanks story man me. um this proves again that anything is possible yep. okay we say it all the time a lot of people got a lot of people around them they say people like you don't make things like that you're not like them dude you're just a normal dude so am i but if you crack us open we're just a little bit crazy what did we do we didn't quit when everybody told us to quit we didn't play video games when everybody, you know, told yeah. us to play video games. We wanted to research. We wanted to study. We wanted to self-develop. You know, we felt like there was something better out there in the universe. When we work hard for it, it will give it to us. Yep. It will give it to you eventually. Like, everybody understand that. It will happen. And just all like, the tools are out there as oh well. Oh, my gosh. So it's they're, just crazy. They're I was just now. talking about this this week, and, and the kids are going to pass all the older guys that – aren't totally they, and they're not going to pass them at like 50 the, miles an hour it's going to be like at 200 miles an hour there yeah so let's finish on this time and experience means nothing no nope. look me and you we were taught we had to work for a long time yep way to get around you know 10,000 hours of doing this and then that yep. I, I believe that repetition is the mother of skill you gotta do something a lot to get good at it 
But, dude, you get around the right people. You can turn decades into days. Oh, it's crazy. And I think that's your goal right now is you're it taking is. these guys and you're like, dude, listen, you don't have to go the long road like I did. You don't have to go from 26 to 46. Dude, you can go from 26 to 28. Like, it, it, it can happen. You can compress those time frames. It's just wisdom. It's maturity. It's information. It's new experiences. And it's new people. Yep. And it's total immersion. If you want that new life, you got to immerse into it. So, again, I want to say thank you. Thanks. Appreciate you guys. Hey, get in touch with this guy. See a link below. Hit him up on social media. We'll see you in the next podcast. Let's go. Hey, guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor. Share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video. Comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications. And then subscribe to the channel. we got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.